Okay, so as you can see, uh, light is a quite a popular topic. So we're going to do a series of videos uh, to show you what are the things to take note of, to find out how do you see clear images, how do you place pins looking through the glass block, and then also try to tackle that one year of funky question which you have to look through water. So hopefully this will help you. Okay, so here we have our setup as per the paper. So the normal line is one cm away. Okay, our glass block is in our frame. Then we have two pins. So one of the things you need to take note is that because the pins is very close to the edge of the glass, don't mistake the edge of the glass later for a pin. So now let's look at it through the glass. Okay, so now we are coming down here. Okay, all right. So you see that there are. There are three lines in the glass. There is one line that is lighter, and then there is there are two darker lines. Two darker lines are actually the pins. This line is actually the edge of the glass. So ignore this. Okay. So we want these two lines to be together. You don't have to be bothered about the head of the pins as above. So you see the pin is broken. So this is looking through the glass. This is not through the glass. So as we shift to the right, these two lines is going to meet, get closer and closer together, you see? And then now form one line. You move too much, it will split again. So you want this point where both is one line. Then you're going to stick your third pin to cover this one line. So this third pin, you have to cover that one line. One down. And then another one. To cover all of them here right okay so let's take a look at it from the top view so from the top view if I remove my glass block put a ruler here so you see this line here is fairly parallel to this line so I know that I'm in good hands so that's how you do it just have to repeat the experiment Right, so here we have the setup of the 2015 paper is relatively easy is to find the focal length of the lens so you have your light source your cross wire screen then lens screen and then a meter rule so you are supposed to shift the lens the first one is to shift from the cross wire downwards until you see a clear image and then secondly you're supposed to shift from here downwards until you see a clear image so we before we go to the main gist of the video which is how do you determine what is a clear image let me just go through it in theory quickly first so this is our ray diagram we have our lens then this one focal length two focal length three focal length away so we all know that let's say if your object is in between the space or less than one focal length you are not going to get any real image means that you're going to get nothing on the screen nothing here so it must be from one focal length away so let's say if you have something between one focal length and two focal length so two lines first line cut across the optical center doesn't bend second line which is parallel to your principal axis and then cut through your focal point you will end up getting a inverted magnified image so later when we are going to look at the position of our image we are going to move from you're going to move around the screen so a lot of times you are looking at this part and this part so what you want to find is this part Okay, so that means you are looking for something that is a diffuse of light go to become focused and become diffuse again so the main thing you are looking for is change right which I will show you later on so similarly let's say if you put an object that is much further away from at like say like at 3 focal length away more than 3 focal length away what you will get is
you will get a real image that is very small right so this is your real inverted image which is much smaller so this is the one that you are shifting the lens from screen this is the one that you are shifting the lens from the crosshair so both is the same concept you will be moving the screen all right jostling between these two zones so again we are looking for change diffuse of light concentration diffuse again so let's look at it uh, from the actual experiment itself so now we're going to get we're going to move lens from the crosshair right so we're going to move lens from the crosshair downwards until we kind of see a an image so okay let me do it like this so that you can see so we're going to move it down right then you can move some more so you see light this is diffuse go down concentrate again and then diffuse again so once there is a change means that you move too much come backwards okay until you see it become diffuse again then go back so this is the point then just stay at it so are you going to get a super crisp iPhone type of image? No, you will not get that because there are many variables on that. So what you're looking for is the point where if you move forward, you will diffuse. If you move backwards, you will diffuse them. That is your clear image already. Alright, okay. Then the second one, moving from here. So here, this is your diffuse image, right? So I'm going to pull it backwards. Then it becomes small, 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 then it becomes big again. Ah, so this is the change which we talked about just now. So we're going to move it back again until it focuses. So actually, I have a very tiny T. And downwards, you see it diffuse again. So come back. Okay. This is my, this is my point. All right. So it might be very small. Sometimes you may not be able to actually even see your T. But... If that's the point that as you move forward and backward, it becomes bigger, then that is your clear image. So I hope this will help you in converging lens style questions. Hey, thank you so much for staying through the entire video. We hope that the video has benefited you. So if you like the video, remember to click like and don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss out on any new videos that we have just prepared. Okay.